During the Second World War, German soldiers began to employ methods of concealing and breaking the outline of their distinctively shaped Stahlhelms, using everything from mud and grit to captured civilian and enemy camouflaging material. As German soldiers would fight in multiple theaters for the duration of the war, different methods of camouflaging would naturally be developed. In Africa, soldiers of Erwin Rommel's Africa Corps would commonly paint their helmets with tan to blend in with the desert terrain, while in Italy, German soldiers took advantage of the mountainous terrain, developing various camouflage patterns, often including heavy use of tan paint and light use of green paint. In the middle of 1943, German High Command standardized the camouflage color scheme consisting of tan, green, and red-brown to be used mainly on vehicles. This scheme would also be used on helmets, especially in France. However, the colors of the collector dubbed Normandy camo pattern were not restricted to military paint and colors. Paints of different tans, greens, and browns from civilian stores were also used by soldiers to camouflage their helmets. Normandy camouflage was sprayed, brushed, and hand applied to helmets, resulting in a large variety of camouflage patterns and methods. During the winter months on the eastern and western fronts, white camouflage was utilized to help blend into the snow-covered terrain. German soldiers commonly used white paint to camouflage their helmets, but when the snow disappeared, the helmet would have to be repainted. Soldiers would combat this issue by either repainting the helmet or scrubbing off the white paint with an abrasive brush. However, by mixing chalk with water, soldiers were able to whitewash their helmets, and unlike painting their helmets, whitewashing could be easily removed once winter was over. Other items German soldiers used for camouflaging, including chicken wire baskets, bread bag straps, cord, helmet covers, nets, and captured enemy and civilian fabrics were used on all fronts in different variations, some of which were fabricated by soldiers in the field. I will make a second part to this video, where I will demonstrate how to make some of these camouflaging items, such as chicken wire baskets and nets. That about wraps up part 1. Thanks for watching, please consider supporting my channel by liking and subscribing, and I'll see you all in the next video.